The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 421, NASDAQ up 127, S&P's up 38. Pretty wild, right? What's going on out there, man? We got a lot of green on that chart. <laughs> gold, gold contract getting slammed down $27. That being said, though, guess what? You're going into 540,000 contracts. So uh, it's going to be pretty cool watching the gold and silver market because they just keep refusing a lower price. Silver's down 53 cents, 19 dollars two cents. Light sweet crude up 46 cents, 56 dollars 72 cents a barrel. And notes and bonds they're getting slammed too. You get the 10 year down one point. Plus two ticks, 130.106. 30 year off two full points, plus 11 ticks at 163.19. King dollar, King dollar down uh, 203 ticks, trading 98.190. Had some volume yesterday. We'll see if we get any follow through. The number now you're going to watch on King dollar is going to be 97.770. Right now you're at 98.185. The 97.770 will get you back in the lower range. The euro is at 110. The pound is at 123. They're both moving higher, and you get the yen at 107.08. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Kevin Hicks at TD Ameritrade. Think of swim as you do every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, every trading day right here, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time. You want to understand the option market, option strategies, futures, great program, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time. If you haven't test-driven yet the Think of Swim platform, real easy to do. As you're at TFNN, just hit that banner, bring it up. They'll allow you to trade with paper money. You can follow Kevin and his team every trading day. Kevin Hicks, what's going on? Good morning, Tom. Another day, another couple percent on the upside. You know, you know what's really catching my eye this morning, guys? And obviously the news out of China is something that this market can embrace, that, that's for sure. And you've got good ADP data this morning. That's another yes. precursor for the non-farm perils. But the risk-off assets are getting hit hard today on the downside. Bonds, 30-year bond down two points now. More right. than two points. I mean, right. th th these are pretty big moves in the risk-off assets. So it's telling me that, you know, we talked about this yesterday on the TD Ameritrade Network. We, we, you know, we said people are getting prepared for, you know, th you know the downside in this market. But uh, how many of them are prepared for the upside? Right. How many are prepared for this getting better, not worse? That, and, and that's deviant, there's no, no doubt, but it's true. I you know, yesterday right. when, I, when we were bringing you on, Kevin, I'm saying to myself, hey, you better understand defined risk. You know, the S&P, you know, you're either up uh, 20 or down 20. Well, guess what? We're up 40. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know, ahead of a number that's, in my opinion, the biggest data point of the month tomorrow, we just got a number out of ADP that maybe – makes you think a little more bullish on those numbers. I mean, the ADP number, they were looking for 150. And remember, the, these are private payrolls, and, and private payrolls for tomorrow's number were looking 148. Yeah. So now you see the estimate, they came in 195. No, it's a big so number. Big number, Steph. That's, that's a, a big beat right, right, right there. So you gotta think that because of that, the estimates for tomorrow's number will start inching a little higher. And so I think yes. that and this market is so driven by any news, good or bad, on China and trade discussions that I think that's why you're seeing the, you know, the actual uh, scheduling of a meeting is pretty bullish for this market. It shows you how little it needs in terms of good news. Particularly because they're talking about the meeting in October. It's September 6th. Right. <laughs> no, nothing happens in 30 days, you know, man. August was slow, so, slow September. We'll yeah, be fine. Yeah. So it's really intriguing. And, you know, what's going to get intriguing here, you know, we, September 18th, you know, the Fed, it's about 100% that they're going to go down a quarter point. But I think you're going to start hearing that, okay, well, what's going on? We know that the job has just gone up. The market is near highs. <laughs> You know, so what else is happening out here um, that the Fed has to keep going down? You know? Exactly. What in this scenario 
is giving the Fed a reason to cut rates, other than the global outlook for interest rates in our own 30-day Fed funds future. Yes. And, and, the, and just the sentiment and the world as we know it calling for it, but is that enough? Is that what the Fed should be listening to? Their mandate, remember, is full employment right. and inflation. Right. Well, right. you've got 3.7 unemployment and you've got, you know, an inflation number that you can make an argument about, right? That inflation is too low and, and can be, you know, this economy needs some way to get inflation higher. But I'm not sure if lower interest rates does it. It hasn't so far. No, it hasn't. So it's, it's tricky. And that's, you know, for sure. you, that's a great point because it not only hasn't done it here, it hasn't done it across the world. Right. They, right. I mean, you know, they, they get yeah. negative interest yeah. rates in, in Japan, they've had forever, and they still have no inflation. I mean, yeah, think about that, Tom, what you just said. Negative interest rates aren't bringing any inflation. Right. So, how could lowering our interest rates bring inflation when you see the extreme? of it in the eurozone and they're not getting inflation out of it so it's an interesting discussion to have for sure is what we're doing fixing getting us to where we want to be it's, it's a it's a discussion remember this has never happened we've never I been know. in a scenario the, the the action going on in these markets right now with bonds and interest rates is unprecedented yeah in terms of of the overall world look on interest rates it's yeah. it's uh something they'll write books about i think down, down the road definitely yeah i can't i can't wait that we can get the first basically cognizant you know theory of how you get into it and how you get out of it i mean this has been right. going on a long time and you know it's not like if you look at Japan, you're almost talking 15, 16 years. That's what I was like. How much patience you got, man? You got like 20, no, 25 so, so, years. So for, really, I'm just the like, answer. Like inside the financial business, there's a lot of smart people, and it's like, man, you know, no one can get a handle on. Okay, what does that really mean? And and how do you get out of it? Yes. You know, I mean, because we know being traded is momentum is a huge deal, man. Yes. You right. know what I mean? It's huge. It's like, you know, I heard I had an analyst yesterday. I thought I was hearing things, man, like saying that. Well, yeah, you can still buy bonds. Because they're going up, and I'm saying, and they, they, they had been talking about a portfolio, you know, how much stocks and bonds. Sure, I'm saying to myself, hold it, man. You know, you got to explain to these people that, man, if you're buying a bond at 163, and you know the rates go up, well, you're going to be about 125 in about a heartbeat. I man. just pulled up the TLT <laughs> just on the Think or Swim platform real quick. Well, yeah, if you bought the TLT yesterday, you're down a percent and a half on your capital today. Boom, right. just like that, and right. you're buying long-term right. bonds. Right. Right. And so people don't realize. You know, buying bond futures is, is it's, it's a different world, right? I mean, there, there used to go, there was a time when Tom and I wore younger men's clothes yeah. when you used to buy, go to the bond market for lack of volatility. Right. Bonds right now might be the most volatile product out there. Agreed. Yeah, frankly, no even though the E-minis and the S&P 500 have given it to run for its money, but bonds are incredibly volatile right now. Right. And how about just to finish up, Kevin, we got the VIX under 16. They just stood yeah. in the den under the 50-day um, EMA. Um, I mean, just remarkable yeah. because we're just we're moving 1 to 2%. We're coming down like, hard today, Tommy. Oof, man, right? Got to love it. Yeah. Listen, folks, right here, 45 minutes from now, Kevin, you have a great one, safe one. We look forward to the show. You have a great weekend, and we look forward to speaking to you next Tuesday. Thanks for having me on, guys. Thanks, Thank Kevin. Thank you. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Folks, Dow. Dow's up uh, 468. Nasdaq's up 149. You got the S&Ps up 45. Percentage-wise out here, it's a monster. You got the, the Nasdaq up 1.9%. The S&Ps up 1.3. The Dow up 1.8. Gold. Let's go take a look at that gold contract. So gold, bottom line, you've gone from a price point of uh, 1561. You're at 1526. Quite a little haircut. Yep. You get 370,000 contracts. So you go into 456 and 473. Okay. And we'll probably, we'll see what we get out here. I suspect we're going to get like something like 500,000 out here today. And I'm just keeping in mind, so that low from August 30th, 152560, we're within about a buck of that. Uh, yeah, so and in fact, you know, the, what you have here, folks, this was pretty cool. You know, every time, you know, like the last big downdraft was on the uh, the 13th okay. of August. You went from 1546 to 1488. I mean, that's how gold trades. That's that's, that's the bottom line. You know, it does when yeah. bonds are trading like this, right? Totally. When when you get totally. the 10 year, I almost had to do a double take where I can't remember the last time, especially in this direction, because we've gotten such a move in August, yeah. where we actually had lower price in bonds and higher yield to the tune of the 10-year moving more than a full point trading down and the 30-year moving two points. Um, so with that in mind, you know, yeah, you're going to get some action on gold for sure. And uh, so when we look at these bonds, okay, the 10-year, we are at 1.1 million contracts. That's not a lot. Contract volume on the way down. You know, these, uh, this is the, we're already rolled to the Z contract, okay? If I put the U contract up, what you're going to see is that this is going higher with 2.2 million. So that thing's got to get up for another million, which it can. It's only yeah, 10.30 so it's, in the morning. Could it be a lot for 10.30, you know? right? 10.20 yeah, exactly. in the morning? You it know? could be, right. Yeah. Especially so, when you got the Dow up approaching 500, and you almost have everything at session highs or lows. You do. As in the, the markets are at highs, the bonds are at lows, gold's at lows. So you might see that extend and accelerate. It's possible. And this will be cool to watch, the TLT. Yeah. The reason that th this is... When you're doing the bonds, folks, the TLT you should bring up whether you're trading it or not if you really want to understand a little bit more about the bonds. And the reason being is that we always have volume on the TLT without going from contract to contract. Sure. So what I like there is that 
You're coming into 16.19 million. Okay, August 23rd. Right. Now, we've done 4 million. So what should happen is this. You absolutely should have more volume. Okay? It's only 45 minutes into the market, right? We get 6.5 hours. You know, it's already done a quarter of the percentage. Now, if it doesn't and you don't get into this 143.43 number, that says quite a bit, you know? So, and that's what the note and bond market has continued to do, and I'm talking about for a couple of years, as, and that's what the gold market has done for the last six months. Every single time that you think you're actually getting hit hard, you're volatile, yes, fast, yes. On the way down, the volume is contracted pretty dramatically. So, we'll see where that baby shakes out. Natural gas, right? Yeah, we, we sure do. Gas? We do. So it's Thursday. We get our natural gas inventory numbers at 1030. And again, we say it sometimes. So pretty interesting. Anytime you get a Monday holiday, you natural, oh, that's right. natural, gas, natural gas inventories, for some reason, stay the same. They're always Thursdays at 1030. And maybe there's just enough days as in they come back Tuesday, they have Wednesday, they're still able to put out the report on Thursday as expected. But the oil number is usually Wednesday, and there's probably not enough time where you just have Tuesday in the week. They're still assembling that report, pulling everything together. So yeah, we get oil at 11 a.m. today. We get right. natural gas at 1030. And let's jump over, see where we're trading at, man. So, we'll jump it up, man. Look at gold. It's not stopping. 1519 as we jump over. Boy, oh boy, things are extending pretty quickly. Um, okay, so let's get in here. Natural gas. Look at oil rocking and rolling. There's too much. I can't stay focused on natural gas right mm. now. Uh, man, look at this. 243. So, some volatility on this. I mean, just back this up from yesterday, man. You go from 234 wow. up to 246. That is a monster move. Man, and just keep backing it up. We were just at 231 to 246. Um, so again, we're, we're looking at the October contract. We're sitting at about 243. Now, jumping around a little bit briefly. First, uh, let me get in here and pull up the 11 a.m.s quickly. We'll close that. We'll jump in here for the 11s. We're going to have 245 with a price point, okay? So we're a little bit away from that, but not bad. We're about a penny and a half within about where these two contracts. Now, what's going on here? Is this market moving too quickly? Why do we have no action in here? Yeah. All right. Well, Interesting. Right? Yeah. Um, let's see. So maybe it's just that bid offer. That's the 11 a.m. I'm just checking my math. Why don't we? I'm going to pull up the new ones because I'm not sure why exactly that would be completely out of the money because there's definitely a chance that, that there should be a bid offer. Right. As in, there's a chance it climbs above 245 in the next 35 minutes with the movement it's getting. But nonetheless, let's jump to the noons. So the noons have 240 with a price point. Yeah, see there, this yeah. is, it's not a bid here too. I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, and this is where, folks, you know, if this ever happens and you don't understand what's going on, you yeah. don't, don't got to make that trade, right? No, don't. No, yeah, that's right. it, exactly. Until where you just, yeah. It better make sense because perfect example, yesterday we were looking at things, we, we couldn't quite figure it out, and we had missed back crude oil, right? Crude oil wasn't coming out. So make sure you got all your ducks in a row and that everything makes sense before you put money at risk because you don't have to make that trade. Um, and let's just jump around. So we may not be able to pull it off with the 230s. Same thing. Yeah, and, and 250 may not have an active bid, as in that's seven pennies away. Um, but nonetheless, they're But normally, if they have them up there as trading, that they have a bid. I agree. Yeah. And so finally, we get in where there is a bid offer size, a market that's actually being made. Um, and I'm not sure. Maybe Nadex is struggling to keep market makers in natural gas as it jumps around too much. I'm just throwing out possible yeah. oh, ideas, yeah, yeah. right? You got to keep around what's going on. So let's let's take a quick peek. Um, we're sitting at 243. And now this is where, man, not a bad trade if you're maybe bullish, directionally biased. You got 243, the contract's trade net. I call it, you know, 242.9. This contract has a floor at 240, a ceiling at 290. I would say that by 230, that's a... Uh, 50 cents. A, you know, as, as far as you could ever imagine the contract um, reaching. So almost unlimited profit potential for right. all intents and purposes. And for that limited downside, which is you're, you're capped at a three-penny loss... You're going to be paying almost a penny in premium here, okay? So the it's contract trading at 242.9, you're getting at 243.9. Not bad, yeah. You're risking $39, which represents 3.9 pennies, but not bad when we just pulled it up, man. And that goes till 2:30. So you're talking about four hours of exposure. We're going to get some inventory numbers in a half hour. Um, not bad at all, yeah. So we'll see. Crazy market, though. That is crazy. So that natural gas market. Can you just see what, what yes. contract are they trading yeah. on that? I believe it was October. October. October, yep. okay. NG. 
N G. Is it Z is December, I think. Yeah, maybe back it up. You're not gonna want December, I don't think, right? No. And unfortunately it goes September here. Right. Maybe just go generic? Yeah. Let's see where that brings us. Well, that again. It's sitting at two forty three three, so that's that's close. right where we're at. Yep. Look at that oh, run, Oh, look man. at that. So it's at the top of the range. Interesting. What is the top there? 248.9. We'll call it 249, okay? Yeah. Man, look at that run. Yeah. Everything had a big month in August, man. Yeah, that's a that's a, a half a point. A half a point. In, and that contract, folks, is $5,000. And it's 20%. You went from 2 bucks to 240 Right. 20% in a month. Pretty wild. It is. Let's see. What is the uh, contract value? Wow. Big money. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Dow's up 427. Nasdaq's up 146. S&P's up 41. Come right back. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Natural gas. We got some natural gas here. We got more than the market thought, man. Rising yep. stockpiles, 84 billion cubic feet for the week. The estimate had been looking for a rise of 77. We got more supply that should hint to lower prices. We'll jump back to the chart. And just like that, man, what did yep. we say, right? If you were going to go bullish, at least you would have been capped out on your losses at 240, where it, where it dropped to in about three seconds. Right. Um, 
They were bullish and bearish, but yeah, more natural gas. And you know, you had that natural gas. When you look at it, it was right at the top of the range, right? Yes, by, right. by a penny. Yeah, um, definitely. You know, pretty pretty crazy. We'll pull it up, but that's natural gas. We get the crude oil inventories at 11. We'll take a look at that a little bit later in the hour. Um, so we were just looking at, right? How about we work? Oh, this is intense, folks. Look SoftBank. Hey, anyone, if you're going public, go talk to SoftBank. They're handing out easy money, man, before wow. you go public. So WeWork is said to a target IPO valuation well below their recent round. So the company is looking for, and I love how wide this is, like 20 to $30 billion valuation. Right. Well, if you're worth 20, that's great. If you're worth 30, you just increase the value of your market cap by 50%. I know. By doing nothing, you know, like that is quite you a You need range. a good rap, man. Yeah, and, yeah, right, you better. And the last round... So, um, 47 billion. So when Tommy's saying the last round here, this is what you really wrap, wrap your head around. Before they went public, or they're going to go public, they did an, a round. SoftBank invested that the company would, is worth 47 billion, folks. Okay. Yeah. So if you ever come in, whether it's 20 or 30 or 25, half of that. Uh, yeah, they start out any and on the it, downside. It doesn't usually happen, man, because that's venture capital money. That's usually the smart money getting in beforehand. Yep. You know, venture capitalists don't exist because they invest at a valuation above what the company then goes public with fu in the future. Um, many times, you know, they're getting access to companies that are ripe for the picking, not that are oh, yeah. pillaging investors' money before they go public. That's usually what happens when they actually hit the broad market, exactly. right? The likes of Lyft, the likes of Uber, okay? Right. Um, so pretty remarkable. Uh, and this is gonna come out quick. They, yeah. They're saying here that they're gonna start their roadshow next week. So if yep. the roadshow starts next week, this will IPO before the end of September. And they're, um, and they're looking to raise about $3.5 billion, and uh, they plan to take out a $2 billion letter of credit facility and a $4 billion delayed drawdown term loan from several banks concurrent with the IPO. And, uh, yeah, so this is where their IPO plans filed last month were greeted by sometimes blistering criticism for the yep. way it obscured key details about the economics of the business. The startup, headed by Adam Newman, leases and owns office uh, spaces in office building, which it decorates, rents it out to companies from tiny startups to large corporations. It's raised more than $12 billion since its founding nine years ago and has never turned a profit. And I believe they're far from turning a profit. Right. And there's a, there's a company in London, folks, that does the same thing. And they, on Bloomberg, they interviewed the CEO, right? Yes. And this company is just trade like as a real estate company, right? Okay, this and company, the WeWork or the other one? No, the, the other, other one. one. Okay. See, WeWork is the same. They're a technology company. Yeah, right. And uh, the the valuation, if it comes down to the same valuation, they do the same thing. I mean, this thing's gonna get smoked. Sure. I mean, beyond belief. Right. Smoked. That's where you. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So pretty remarkable. We'll see how it shakes out, man. And then these guys also play the inside game, you know. So yeah. inside of here, what you also have is that uh, that this Adam Newman, exactly. right? Exactly. That's what. So when the stories have come out, is that you have executives buying buildings through other companies, right. not having anything to do with WeWork, right. and then lease, having WeWork pay them, them right. to lease those companies. Right. Um, all legal, as far as I oh, understood, yeah. Yeah. but as an investor, that's where things get very yeah. worse. And we're talking about conflicts of interest, you're talking about biases, you're talking about just lying in your own pocket at the expense of investors. And, and if you get a slowdown, so picture if you get a slowdown, folks. You get a slowdown, it's going to be like, the CEO owns the buildings, the company has to pay the rent, then the real question is going to be, you know, let's say, let's say at some point we're going to get a slowdown. Yes. Bottom line, you know, you get these companies, so they get less rent from the people who have written the place, then now they don't have the rent to pay all the leases. Yep. What, what, what do you do? Yeah. What, you know, that, there's the conflict that's sure. extraordinary. Sure. You know. Yeah. Pretty wild, man. Big time. And I'm surprised that for a company of this mammoth size, right? And so they're building themselves a technology company. Why wouldn't, <laughs> if you're raising $12 billion, why would you be paying to lease a building to then lease it out again? Why wouldn't you be the person yes. at these rates buying <coughs> the mortgage, buying the building? Guess totally. why? Guess why? Because the CEO wants to. Right. I mean, that's like a, a staggering right. statement yeah, in its own right. That's the quote. It, that's, yeah. that's, that's all you really have to know. Yeah. 
You, you know. got twelve billion dollars. You know, I mean, why are you the one? Right. You Be know, because the bottom line paying is paying lease that fees to somebody then, else. Isn't then, that the whole business? You're the one collecting. It, it is lease payments. And so if you really are vertically integrated, you should own the building. I, I, and, I just and then and it's much safer. It was just like oh you're talking God. about. You now know, you're talking versus, about versus, versus you actually own nothing. Right. And you're just playing a middle game between the the pay the cost you pay to lease right. versus the cost you can lease out to you know. Multiple, customers, multiple businesses, right? Yeah. yeah, pretty wild. Man. It is, man. Let's go look at the oil market. So we know at eleven o'clock, oil is going to be coming up. Uh, so this baby is getting to the top of its range. Yeah, it's right here. So this is going to be cool watching this shake out. You know, fifty-seven fifty really is it? Fifty-seven fifty, fifty-seven forty. We be just where two yeah. two trading days practically right. going crude. Now what you have here, this is this is a monster contraction in volume. So that's telling me that we're going to go south on that uh, oil market, but we'll see. Pretty remarkable. Yeah. So the high there, you're looking at August 13th, 5740. Man, we could be there in a heartbeat the way we've just moved. And pretty oh, yeah. remarkable that you go back to just 5284. Tuesday, right? we're almost five dollars. We're more than four dollars above that price on the low in from Tuesday to Thursday, starting off September trading with a bang, man. And in the uh, oil market, you're talking about millions of barrels a day. Think right. about that, right? I mean, it must be just amazing uh, the amount of trading because you better be some kind of a trader if you're in the oil market. Yes. You know, I mean, I, I, you, the, the cool thing is you know fundamentally what oil costs you get out of the ground. Yes. So then it's just, well, okay, what are you happy with, right? Yeah. But it, it's pretty dramatic. You wake up in the morning, it's like, okay, you're, you've either sold it or bought it, two or three dollars difference, you know, big number. Big numbers. Let's go take a look at the NDX 100 and see the strength versus the weakness inside here. So NVIDIA up 6%. You got Micron up 6%. Xilinx is up 4.9. NXPI up 4.7. So Those all chips. All chips. Yeah. On the downside, you got uh, Pepsi is down 1.3%. XL down 1.2. Netflix 1.2. on Netflix? After, go ahead. Yeah. Starbucks as well. So I heard a report yesterday, not a fan, yeah. that they are beginning to experiment with the idea of weekly releases. Okay, no more binge. No more No more. they drop a season and you get 12 episodes to watch at the same time. Okay. Now, guess what this has to do with? They well, figured it out like I have. People are going to start signing up. Oh, totally. You they watch, probably heard you. You watch every episode yeah. you want and you cancel. And they said, we got to change our business plan, man. We got to keep right. people. Um Wow. For the long, and yeah, they've yeah. already started. Certain shows have already started that business model, and they've figured it out that we can't just drop this because, for the first time ever, they're probably realizing that people are going to begin canceling. They've yes. never had this, and what are you going to do? You can do exactly what I just said. Right. You're going to sign up for a month or two. You're going to watch everything you want to watch. You're going to cancel it, and you're going to come back in another month or two when they release the programs. And so they're going to begin. Unfortunately, but guess what? I don't think that's the right business plan because. I'm not going to get hooked into that. The thing I actually love is the ability to binge watch. Yeah. So they no, better be careful. But if you're, if you're home grooving, it, it's, it's fun. They, yeah, they change how people view it, so we'll yeah. see. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. 
From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get the competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's up 456. You get the NASDAQ up 146. S&Ps are up 43. So let's go inside the Dow. So what do you think? Is anything green, right inside the Dow? Yeah, look at that. There actually, there actually is. Kodak. Slightly. Yeah, Coke, right? Coke, yeah. thank you. Yeah, Kodak used I to said be around. I said that getting confused. No. <laughs> no, 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 it used As to be it there. came out of my mouth. So it used to second. be there. Wait a second. No, totally. <laughs> as well as Polaroid. So Pepsi both. down and Coke, right? We saw yep. Pepsi uh, not in the Dow, but we did see Pepsi down. Yes. So I wonder what's happening with those yeah, two. Yeah, that's interesting, yeah. right? So the, the positive points, you get 49 uh, positive points from Boeing, 42. Goldman, 41, uh, 3M, 32, Caterpillar, big, big numbers here. Yes. Uh, on the downside, very small numbers. You have Procter & Gamble putting three negative points, Coke, two, uh, three, Merck, yeah. uh, Same two deal. points, two three. And a half, yeah. Let's go see what is happening with, uh, so. Well, they, that's, so that's yesterday, dead offering. New energy drink. I see a bunch of nothing, right? Yeah, yeah. all right. Oh, they're, they're at highs anyway. How about, okay, yeah, so let, say, let how just, about Pepsi? <laughs> yeah, right. If we could dig into the news afterwards yeah, for them, too. Yeah, they're at highs, too. So this is... Everyone's drinking sugar water. Oh, my God. Look at this. Pepsi... No, they got a lot more than sugar water these days. And that's the only reason. Well, 58 to 137. <laughs> but that's 2011. But they're bottom line still, is, yeah. And it's because. It's not because of um, their soda. It's, they've really expanded their, their product lineup. Yeah, so they're at... Uh, so you get beverages is 21 billion. There's the this Frito Lay, man. Yeah. <laughs> the, everyone's hooked on those things, man. Totally you you man. eat those things, you're, you're toast. Give me some corn chips. The, the, the whole thing, you can't <laughs> eat one. There's no you doubt. Can't. That's 16 billion. Europe and the Sub-Sahara is 11 billion. Look at that. That's a big number too, man. I wonder how. Yeah. So that's that's. Uh, Latin America, seven billion. What's interesting here is that this is usually a product segment, and they've broken down. A, this is what you're supposed to be geographical. This is supposed to be product. But somehow they've now just broken geographics into products. Oh, do you yeah. see what I'm saying? It's yeah. usually Let's do Coke and see what they say. Yeah, no, I do. I yeah. guess I can see that. So let's see. How do I do this? Um, Coke. This? Uh, oh, I know. I know. Sorry. Revenue. Yeah. yeah. And they, they have one yeah. product segment. Non-alcoholic beverages and and bottling, of course, but they don't break it down as all. And then you got look at international, man. Big portion of what they're doing versus even the U.S. Yeah, 16 billion. This is Coca-Cola now. 16 yes. billion international. North America, 11. Yeah. Bottle investment, 6.8 billion. Yeah. And then you know that's interesting. Though. So Pepsi has bigger numbers on the way up, I and mean, Coca-Cola has been going down for gross revenues. This is. Yeah. 
44 billion 2015, 37 this year, but it looks like they're going to pop it next year to 39. And I wonder how, though, if they had sold off some bottling, because check out that number yeah, right there. Yeah, right. Bottling. Right. You know, so if that's down 33%, three year growth, that's, a, that's an annualized number over the last three years. And that's, that's like the Budweiser deal, that even when you sell it off, they run it. <laughs> Meaning, you know, Budweiser's distributors, the, the main companies telling them how to run things. Sure, and sure. the same with their, their, yes, yes. With their bottling plants, okay? Yeah, yeah. But yet they don't have to put up the uh, capital. Yes, you know what I mean? right. So it, it, it comes off. themselves nice and trim, right? Yeah, it, it comes off their spreadsheet, which is important. So you want to take a look at some oil? Yes. Let's see what we got going 11 on. 11 o'clock. So, oh man, and checking back on natural gas, we're now under that 240 price point real quick on the heels of that inventory. But jumping over to crude, so we're going to get the crude oil inventories. We won't be on the air live. Um, program will wrap up, but 11 a.m., that number's going to drop. Man, quite a run again in this crude. So we're looking at the October contract. We're trading above $57 now. These contracts may not line up too well, only because we've gotten... So much movement. So right? much movement yeah. already in these con um, in this contract, but let's just take a look right away. 11 a.m.s. Not bad. We're going to have 57.25. We're within eight pennies. Doesn't get much closer than that of the price point. So if you're bullish, this is kind of out of the money, right? You start to get exposure at 57.25. Not bad. We're looking at about $8. You got to climb above 57.25, get to 57.32. Oh, correction. This contract expires right when the numbers come out. This is again, oh, I was saying, why is this so cheap? Yeah, this is, yeah. Why is this so cheap? Right. So, Not there the we 11. go. This yeah. is why you want to get used to right. whether it's, you know, the NADS, get used to a demo account, folks. You know, yeah. download the Thinkorswim account, right. you know, before you start trading, because that's one of those issues. So, let's get right to the noons, because that gives you an hour after the news. Now, not quite a, a great trade, maybe 57.50, but let's just say you're bullish. Not bad. You're getting in with some intrinsic value. Your losses are capped at 56.75. You have profit for more than a full dollar where it's trading at right now. And you can get in at $52, which represents you're getting in at 57.27. Your losses are capped at 56.75. You get the numbers that drop at 11, and you get an hour of exposure. Not a bad trade if you're bullish there, because you're getting in at 57.26. You're paying 13 pennies above the market. Okay. okay that's the real premium you got to look at. You're right. paying 13, you're buying it for 13 cents more than the active market is where you could get in on futures. Okay. And the reason why you're paying that is because your losses are capped at 56.75. Yeah. Um, now let's just jump. Let's say you want to go bearish, right? You go in bearish. You could take almost an identical trade just to the bearish side. You got 57.50. Is your bullish? Okay, so that gives you forty-five cents pretty in the sim money. Pretty sim sim similar well, contract. Six cents. Interesting. Walk me through. I didn't. I don't follow where you said six cents. Well, there, but we're we're trading at fifty-seven thirteen, right? Yes. And and you're selling it. You, we got to go yeah. off the bid here, right? Because you're selling it now thirteen cents, the same fourteen oh, yeah, yeah. cents. Okay, that's right, where right, of right, premium, right? right. Um, but again, you got a two to one risk reward ratio where you're locked in. Okay, so not that big of a move considering you got a full hour of exposure after the numbers drop and your losses are capped in a market that is just super volatile. But let's say you want to give yourself, let's see what... They get some premium in there, though. That's, there's there's yeah, some decent premium for in an there. hour of exposure in this contract, I always try and look at things to say, okay, is that a premium I want to pay? Is that a fair market premium? Right. And that's what you better be doing when you're trading across the board, right? Well, I say, what if you flip that around on the other side? How much premium would you need? Well, geez, 12 to 13 pennies of premium to give somebody a, a risking one to make two type trade doesn't seem like that much for me when so often we're going to see this jump 25, 35, 45 cents in a heartbeat if that misses on the numbers. And let's just see where the dailies line up. So the first daily is going to give us exposure with either 56. I mean, you could, if you were bearish, maybe this might be a nice one. You'd have from 57.50 down to 54.50, pretty similar. And let's just see until 2.30. So the last one, we were able to get in at about 57, right? Now, if you want exposure till 2.30, you're only going to be able to sell it at 56.85. So now you're paying about 25 cents a premium. And you're selling it at 56.85. And the market's at about 57.09. So that is risking 64 as opposed to the 50. But you got to keep in mind that you now have profits potential down to 54.50. And let's just see the dailies. If we get a bullish potential, yeah, these are just away from the market. You know, I mean, in theory, you could make a trade if you were bullish. This becomes a pretty close trade to, to the futures in that you have lost potential for almost a full dollar. 
Yeah. Okay, so yeah, it's it's you're capped, but you're capped at more than a dollar. But keeping in mind, when you have that much exposure, it's a lot less premium. You're getting in at 5715, markets at 5707. So we're sitting at about 57 bucks. Those numbers come out in 10 minutes at 11. We'll see where we go. Dow, Dow up 440, you get the NASDAQ up 137, S&P's up 41, you get gold down 36 bucks, uh, silver's down 74 cents, notes and bonds, 10-year uh, down one full point three ticks, 30-year off two points, 16 ticks. Come right back. Big numbers. Yeah. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow right now uh, up 450. NASDAQ up 138. S&P's up 21. And, uh, yeah, the 30-year. Uh, you're kind of sarcastically, right? Yeah, 30-year. Is the 30-year going to be down three points by the time we get off the air? Three yeah. full points. Now down. 30-year down two full points and 22 ticks. And that, of course, we looked at the TLT. You know, TLT 20-plus year um, bond fund longer term yeah that's why the TLT really getting smacked today but just mammoth move man no especially doubt. when we haven't seen a mammoth move pulling back for higher yields we've seen the run in August where rates got decimated higher price yeah. we haven't seen I mean just looking at that chart I can't I'm, find I'm, pull, I'm pulling what I'm doing here is I'm pulling up the roll contract yeah see what's happening okay so check it out 
the roll contract, this is the contract, I, I just pulled this back to the September contract, yes. which we're not trading anymore by sure. the way you're trading, but it's light. Yeah. So see what you're going into, though. You're going into 3.1 million contracts. Okay, that's which August is, 23rd. Yep. Yeah, which is pretty cool. Um, yep. So that this is where this always gets wild uh, in the market. That Yeah, it's fast, it's furious, it's all of the above. Uh, but guess what? We'll see where this uh, maybe shakes out uh, at the end of the day. Uh, because the note bond... And the metals, they keep shaking it off, man. As, you know, the S&P shakes it off, gets up, get another couple days, goes back down south again. I mean, it's, it's, the whole thing is wild. What were the numbers of where we are right now? Is that it? Yeah. Yeah, so NASDAQ still sitting 1.7%, Dow up like 1.7 as well. Yeah, and that, and that is a difference uh, because the NDX 100 as well as the NASDAQ has been lagging in a big way. Um, you know, for the last couple of months. And yeah. It's the strength out there today, there's definitely, no doubt. Definitely. Stay right there, folks. We get Think of Swim coming up uh, next. Uh, man, Mr. Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. We'll be back this afternoon. Thanks, pal. Thanks, man. Oh, man. Go get him, folks.